a good violinist, play for others, play with others and have fun in the process. So if you're interested in that, make sure to have a look at my school. In this video, we are going to talk about musical dynamics and in specific in violin pieces. I'm going to discuss all the dynamical signs that you will encounter in pieces and also how to play them. So before I'm going to explain every single sign, let's talk about dynamics. Because some of you might not know what is dynamics. Dynamics in violin music is how loud and how soft you play. And sometimes not only how loud and soft, but also the feeling of the notes that you play. To make this a little easier, let's compare it to talking. I could say every single word and every single letter correctly, but still sound very dull. For instance, if I would be talking like this, I do use the correct words, but it really doesn't sound very nice to listen to it, right? As you see, I've been talking without dynamics at all, so all everything that I said was just plain one kind of voice. And that would be the same if you would play a musical piece completely without any dynamics. It just sounds a little bit more dull, to be honest, a little bit more boring. And that is why we violinists would like to use dynamics, really to elevate our pieces and to make it sound even better. So now let's dive into all the dynamics that you will find in your pieces. First of all, let's start with the most common dynamics that you will find, and that is B, which stands for piano, and F, which stands for forte. As you notice, dynamics normally have Italian terms and piano means soft and forte means loud. So each time you see an F sign, you need to play loud and each time you see a P sign, you have to play softly. Now there are some variations to these signs and those are the following. We have PP which is two P's next to each other and that stands for pianissimo. Pianissimo means very quiet, so even more quiet than piano. On the other hand, we have MP, which means moderately soft or moderately quiet. So it is a little bit louder than P, but still a quiet atmosphere. If you go a little bit louder than MP, mezzo piano, you will find a term that is called MF, and that means mezzo forte. Mezzo forte is louder, but not as loud as forte yet. So if you say MF, you have to play louder. After that, you will have forte, which means loud, and then you have FF, which is fortissimo, and that is loudest. So now you are probably wondering, how do I play all of these dynamics on the violin? So let's have a look at that. To play louder and softer on the violin, you have three options. And normally it would be best to use all three of the options. So let's talk about the first option you have. The first option you have to either play softer or louder is to adjust the pressure in your bow. With that, I mean how much pressure you put in the bow into the string. And normally you put that pressure into the string through the index finger, but not only by pressing our hand inwards, but actually by kind of feeling like you pull the whole arm inwards. So imagine you have to make your complete arm heavy. If you put more pressure on the string, it will naturally sound louder. So now I start with little pressure. And now more pressure. You can experiment with this yourself. And what might happen is that if you add a little too much pressure, it might sound a little squeaky, but that doesn't matter. For now, it is really important that you experiment and try out all the different kinds of pressures. So even if it starts to sound a little squeaky, it is really useful to experiment with that and to know where that boundary exactly is between sounding loud and starting to sound squeaky. 
And the only way to learn that properly is by experimenting and feeling it. The next way to adjust how loud you're playing is by the amount of bow you use. So either you can use a little amount of bow, so you only use, for instance, this part of the hair to play. And you can also, for the same notes, use much more bow, so use much more of the hair. And you directly notice that it starts to sound much louder. So that is your second option is to use less bow hair if you want to make it sound softer and more bow hair if you want to make it sound louder. The third option is the option that probably most of you will struggle with the most and that is by using different contact points. The contact point is the place where your bow hair touches the string. It can either touch the string in the middle, so between the bridge and the fingerboard, closer to the fingerboard, or closer to the bridge. Depending on where you put your bow, you get a different sound. The closer you are to the bridge, the louder it sounds, and the closer you are to the fingerboard, the softer it sounds. So make sure to play closer to the fingerboard if you want it to sound softer, and closer to the bridge if you want your tone to sound louder. You can also find a free mini guide on my website in which I go into much more detail about every single contact point and how to use it exactly how much bow pressure to use on each part of the string and also how fast you should bow because that is different on each contact point. Also, I added my two most valuable contact point exercises in this mini guide. So if you really want to achieve a really beautiful tone and become even more flexible in using every single contact point on the violin without squeaking, scratching or hearing some kind of early sounds, then this mini guide will be really helpful for you. And you can download it for free on my website under www.fireinspiration.com slash contact dash points. So now let's further discuss dynamics and the kind of signs you will see in sheet music. Next to the letters that you will see, such as P and F and F, you now know what they are and how to recognize them. You will also see lines under the notes and they are kind of like a bird beat. They are like going like this or like this. And I will right now also show this in the video what it looks like. These lines are called decrescendo or diminuendo, which is another word for decrescendo or crescendo. So there's two kinds of lines. The one line starts together and then just moves away from each other and the other line starts away from each other and moves closer to each other. The first kind of line that moves away from each other is called crescendo. Crescendo means that you gradually have to become louder. So you don't have to directly start playing loud, like when you would see an F sign, you would directly start playing loud. Instead, when you see the crescendo sign, you know you slowly have to become louder and louder with every note that is within that sign. An easy way to remember that you have to become louder when you see the crescendo sign is to imagine the further away the lines are from each other, the louder you have to play. So if you see that the lines are very far away from each other, you know you have to play loudest at that point. The opposite of crescendo would be decrescendo, or otherwise called diminuendo, and that is where the lines go closer together. So just remember, you have to start at the loudness where you were already, before you encounter the sign, and then you slowly have to become softer. So what can we do in our bow? to actually play those two sides. As you've noticed, all the dynamics is in the bow. So if you want to play louder, it's in the bow, if you want to play softer. So it is all in the right hand, the dynamics, right? It is actually really easy to start to play louder and to play softer if you already had the information I gave you before in this video. We know that there's three ways to change our dynamics. It is to use a different contact point, we can adjust our pressure, and we can adjust our speed. So if we know this, we can do, if we want, one of them, but we can also use all three of them if possible. Normally you use a combination of pressure and speed. So that are the most common ones. So on the moment you start to play very soft, like in a crescendo, you are first playing soft, and then you slowly start to add more pressure and more 
more speed. Let's try that together on the open A string. So. Crescendo are both really common dynamics and you will find them in so many pieces you will be playing. So definitely make sure to remember these two important dynamics. There's two other dynamic signs that are not one of these signs, but still very common in violin music. So I do want to discuss them in this video as well. The first dynamic sign that I am talking about is an accent. If you see an accent and an accent looks like a bird's beak above a note, but it is above the note and not under the note. Under the note you will see the decrescendo and the crescendo signs and above the notes you will see the accent signs and they will be exactly above the note where you will be playing accents. So normally there's just one or several notes where you have to play accents and for each of the notes where you see the accent right above it, so only for that note where the accent is above it, not for the surrounding notes as well, like in decrescendo, for that note, you have to play an accent. The name already says it, an accent is that note should be accented. So it should sound a little louder than the notes around it. Another way to accent the note is not to make it necessarily louder, but to start with some emphasis in the beginning of the note. And you can achieve that with a martelet sound. So what am I talking about? I will show it to you right now. So the first way to interpret an accent is to play that note a little louder, which means that you can use a little bit more pressure and a little bit more speed. For instance, if the third note of the row is an accent, you would play downward before you start the stroke. So before you start to, to play, you actually really relax your hand into the string and then you directly let go on the moment the note starts. So you relax your hand in the string and martelet is a difficult technique and I could make a complete video about this. So don't worry if you don't get this right away. But you just make your arm heavy and make sure that there's a very strong contact with the string. And on the moment you start the note, you let go, you kind of lift your arm and hand. So the note kind of starts with a little palm, you know, like a little scratch actually. If you would exaggerate it, it would sound like... And that is probably a sound you are familiar with if you have been beginning to play the violin recently. So the only difference between that and the martelet stroke is that you make it so short that it's almost unnoticeable. So it's just this little moment of palm, you know, calm. So you hear this little tiny, tiny, tiny. I think it is not a scratch anymore, but more like, yeah, like an accent in the beginning. There's also another notation that you often see for a martelet note. So the notes where you really have that defined beginning of the note. And that is S, F, Z, which means for sando. And if you see this in music, you know you have to play a martelet note. So make sure to have that very defined kind of accent at the beginning of the note. So the difference would be if you have no accent at the beginning, it's just like a soft beginning. You hear like, you don't hear like, now the note is starting. And if you have that accented beginning or the defined beginning, you will hear palm. Right? So you hear like palm. It sounds a little bit like that. You do hear it, so make sure you can recognize both of these notes and if you see the sports sign, make sure to play that martelet note. 
So this sums up pretty much all the musical dynamics that you will find in sheet music. And if you didn't do so yet, definitely have a look at the guide to the contact points after this video, because that is another crucial element that will really help you to get the dynamics to the next level and really become a better violin player. Make sure to comment below this video which dynamics you didn't know yet and write in your own words what it means. It is a really great way to actually remember it after watching this video, to write it down for yourself. So make sure to comment it below if there was any dynamic that you didn't know yet. And if you did know all the dynamics, that is of course great and means you've done a lot of practice already, which you can be very proud of. Don't forget to like video if this video was helpful to you and if you would like to see more videos like this on this channel.